Well, Mr. Goat, what do you think about Wimbledon? Not too much. No, really, Mr. Goat. What do you think? Speak into the microphone. Okay, that's enough airtime for Mr. Goat. Yeah, everybody thinks Novak Djokovic is going to win. And look, I think Novak Djokovic is definitely the favorite. He should win. This is his chance to do something great. That's enough, Mr. Goat. You come in here and ruin the Fed fans' dreams and let us all know that you think Djokovic is going to win. Thanks a lot. But things have changed for sure. Let's look at this. This is from Uncle Tony, longtime coach of Rafa Nadal. Now, now coaching the newly winning... Big win over Roger Federer, Felix Auger, all day, Eliassim. Tony Nadal has revealed he thought his nephew, Rafa Nadal, was once the favorite in the Grand Slam race. But he believes the 2021 French Open outcome has changed this. Well, who do you think? Who do you think he's going to go with? The 60-year-old coached Rafa from his childhood up to 2017. Now he works with number 19, Felix Auger, all day. Happens to be the number of slams that Novak Djokovic has, who he now favors. Djokovic won his 19th Grand Slam title at Roland Garros and is now just one behind Rafa and Roger, who both have 20. The truth is, says Uncle Tony, the truth is that before Roland Garros, I saw Rafa as the favorite to finish with the most slams. Now the subject has changed a bit. I wrote that the next Wimbledon and U.S. Open are going to define things a bit because I understand that each year it'll be more difficult to win. And here's where my interest was caught and why I'm reading this to you first. Tsitsipas is already on the verge of beating Djokovic at the French, saying he, he had a shot. Blew his shot, had a shot. Medvedev and Sasha Zverev, they're already there. Yannick Sinner, Lorenzo Musetti, they are coming. He also added that Djokovic's chances of winning the Golden Slam this year, it's very difficult but it's possible because he is number one. What are you looking at, Mr. Goat? The situation on the ground has changed, and even Uncle Tony has acknowledged it. Everything is set up for uh, Novak Djokovic. But remember, five years ago, we were in a very, very similar situation and then boring old Sam Query did something very exciting for the tennis world, taking out the much-hated and maligned Novak Djokovic uh, pretty early at Wimbledon. I don't remember which round it was now, but that that set everything off. Federer comes back with the big resurgence in 2017, throw Rafa in there because they split all four majors that year. And people think Djokovic is done. But now he's back, and he's in the same exact Situation. So this is a, a must-see a must tournament. I had a feeling that it was all going to come together at Wimbledon this year. I did think we would maybe have Rafa and Roger tied at 20. But there is one man, of course, who can change all this. And I know people are writing him off. Rafa, it's a shame. He's not even here. So it really is set up nicely. This draw, a lot of people are already complaining that Djokovic's draw is very easy. But the truth is, you know, especially with the young guys... This is a real chance. It's a chance for Serena, too, on the other side. Uh, with the young guys slipping and falling, my, my beloved Yannick Sinner, uh, one of his grass court matches, he had a nice slip and fall. I saw, I remember that in 2019, seeing Sitsipas Sitsi slipping and sliding and falling all over the place when he was playing on the grass. Uh, I think Sasha Zverev is ready to do something here. I think Berrettini also is pretty good on the grass and will be able to do it. But honestly... You go through this draw, there's not a lot of, uh, you know, big names that you're going to be afraid of on the grass. I like Ugo Umber. Kyrgios is great on grass, but the guy hasn't played since the Australian Open. And who do you know? Who does he have? He's got Ugo Umber in the first round. It's a very interesting draw, but nothing is more interesting than this goat race to me. And it all comes down to this at Wimbledon. If Djokovic can take it here, it's off. I mean, there's no way he's not going to win more majors. Unless just something really horrible happened that I hope even the big Djokovic haters out there would not wish on Novak Djokovic. Uh, this is the last chance to make a big stand for Roger Federer. I know people are writing him off based on what we've seen in Hala and uh, what we've seen just in his comeback in general this year. But I have a great article here. And before we hit the music and go into the draw, I'll give you one more little article, and then maybe we'll look at Tennis Channel's expert analysis from Tennis.com on their picks. Actually, it's not so bad what they have here. Maybe we'll take a look at that after I go through the entire draw. But let me read this to you. Uh, Todd Woodbridge, 
one of the greatest doubles players of all time. He's got so he's won a, a, quite a few Wimbledons in the doubles, and he's got some opinions from TennisHead.net. Roger Federer needs the stars to align to win Wimbledon, but he can do it. Todd Woodbridge won 16 Grand Slam titles in doubles, including a record nine at Wimbledon. He was ranked as high as number 19 in singles. He's a good tennis player. Uh, this is what he says, talking about Roger and Wimbledon this year and his chances. And I think uh, I think this is an interesting take, even if you feel like... And I, I read something uh, someone wrote to me not that long ago saying, you know, if you think about it, or did, did somebody write this to me or did I read it on Twitter? Was it a comment? I don't remember. But somebody said, if you think about it, Roger Federer, he likes playing for a crowd and, and play, I know he'd already done it at the French Open, played, you know, for uh, empty stands and that uh, awesome night match with Kepfer. But doing it in Hala, a place where he's so comfortable going and having no one there except for the fake cardboard cutout people, that, that probably was a little tough on Roger when he found himself doubting his game, when he fell behind against Felix Auger. And I didn't think of that in the last show that we did mainly talking about that loss. Pretty much the last show was entirely about that. But that, that's a really good point. When Roger is playing well in that first set, you know, pretty well for him, decent for him, I should say, uh, he wins that first set, feeling pretty good, and then the doubts creep in in the second set, and he's got problems, and then he's got major problems in the third set, going down 3-0 in a couple of breaks to his serve, greatest serve on grass ever, maybe, uh, right away in that third set. If the crowd had been there cheering him on, it really would have changed things. I think that that is a major factor in a situation like that. And Roger Federer, he's got to be more used to that than anyone, having the crowd pick him up when things aren't going well because every crowd in the world wants to see the guy do well. So uh, I just wanted to say that real quick. But let's look. This is uh, another mental factor, and it ties into that is why I brought that up. Uh, Woodbridge says, It is one place, Wimbledon, where Roger will go where he there isn't any performance anxiety. There's a real calmness from how well you usually perform when you go there. And there is a comfort in going through the gates, through the routines that you've done over so many years. I always felt that going through the gates, going through the routines, the, the fam familiarity, uh, the comfort level, being at Wimbledon when you've had so much success. He's won it nine times. Rogers won it eight times in singles. Uh, so they have some stuff in common there. I know he will obviously feel that because this is the tournament that he feels like is his own. There will be some motivation. There will be some scars from 2019. But if he thinks back to that year, he played brilliantly and he should have won. That's something more positive to be able to feed off. He can definitely win it, but he's going to need a little help. Maybe somebody takes out a couple of seats. Djokovic does have a fairly tough, considering where he is right now and what he has to do, do tomorrow, more on that later, he does have a fairly tough first round. I don't think Draper, I don't think Don Draper is going to take out um, the Joker, but it is a fairly tough round. Somebody takes out a couple of big seeds. I think John Isner might give a little help, be a more familiar foe than a Berrettini. That might help Roger. That's an example of this. Anyone who can rush Roger, a young guy with a big game, is a threat. Of course, that's Berrettini. He's probably the biggest threat in that uh, bottom half of the draw for Roger Federer. Even though Federer did play it, make him fall on his face a couple of years ago, Berrettini's got a lot more confidence. I was a little down on him earlier uh, this year. He's proven uh, that he he deserves to be top 10. He's a big-time player. If they come out swinging hard like a Matteo Berrettini did at Queens, it's going to be really dangerous because Roger's not going to be able to use his skill set. He knows the history of the sport very well. Ken Rosewald did it. Age 39, 1974. Gets destroyed by uh, Jimmy Connors, of course, but never mind that right now. He knows it's possible. Roger knows the history. He knows it's possible. Different day and age, but it's all about the mentality. He definitely can do it. I think if he gets the right opponents in the right matches, he can definitely come out and win the championship, but the stars are going to have to align. My big question, though, to you, and comment below, because I really, really am genuinely curious about this. I think even Woodbridge would have liked that forehand volley. Yes, Roger can beat anyone here. The stars could align, and he could make it all the way to the final. But is there any chance that it won't be Djokovic waiting there for him? One question. I'll answer it for you. No, Djokovic will be there. But the more important question, the one I'd like your comments on, we'll talk about it throughout the tournament. Can Roger Federer really beat Novak Djokovic here at Wimbledon after everything that happened with 2019? Woodbridge was saying it there that overall he played great and he should have won. That'll mostly be a positive thing for him to draw upon. Can Roger do it? Can he do it this time, especially with what we've seen from him? 
and all the question marks around Roger Federer. I can't answer it. We won't answer it in this show, but I'm curious to hear what you think, so do comment below. Today on Coffee Break Tennis, we've got a giant draw. It's Wimbledon. Thank you, Mr. Wimbledon. Play the song. Thank you, Mr. Wimbledon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wimbledon. Yeah. Can you believe this would have been our fifth Wimbledon since I wrote the song, Thank You, Mr. Wimbledon. We were robbed by the COVID last year. We didn't get it because of the COVID, as they say in Alabama. Um, The draw, like I said before, I mean, skipping a year, I think it's bad for all the young talent. There's some guy like Cole Schreiber. We saw him get some wins against some young guys uh, on the, the little tiny short, super short grass court season. We had jammed, packed in between the French and the Wimbledon. There'll be some guys like that there. I think Dirty Dan's got a real shot to go far. I mean, Dirty Dan could make the semifinals here. Wouldn't be the craziest thing because of this draw. So to say, like, it's an easy draw for Djokovic, there's just, there's not a lot of dangerous people at Wimbledon for guys like Djokovic and Federer, assuming Federer actually gets something close to what we're used to seeing from him. So uh, we have the, let's just, before we do it, because I won't want to do this later, we'll do it now. Tennis.com expert picks predictions of Wimbledon's champions. Who are these experts? Uh, Matthew Fitzgerald. He says Andy Murray is his, uh, what is this? This is his, uh, this is unseated uh, surprises. Guys who are unseated that you think will do well. All right, so he says Andy Murray. Difficult to predict how the body will hold up in best of five. It is on grass. It's easier on the body. Uh, but the prospects of Sir Andy Murray's draw are much better than, say, facing Stan in the first round at Roland Garros. That's right. Uh, yeah, I like Murray I'll, until he runs into somebody. I can't remember who, but I got him going out in, like, the third round, I think. We'll get into the draw soon, I promise. Kale Ham. He says Pierre Ugarbert. You know, it's a good pick. Pierre Ugarbert has a good draw here. The Frenchman showed an insanely high level against Yannick Sinner in Paris. If Herbert can summon even half of that ball striking skill, he has a realistic shot at reaching his first major quarterfinal. Yeah, I like him in my draw too, actually. Uh, Seb Cordy, according to David Kane, young American, enjoyed a credible run to Halle quarterfinals, likely due for a Grand Slam run after a good uh, year in 2021. Uh, the McGroganator says Key Nisha Corey has made quarterfinals at the last two Wimbledons. Help shouldn't be in question. Uh, yeah, never assume that with Key Nisha Corey. Uh, Jordan, although we're going to be nice to Ed McGrogan because I think he makes a pick that I really... Nope, not him. Screw him. We're going to be nice to Steven the Tiger Tignor because he makes a pick that I really like uh, for champion. <laughs> I guess you know what that is now. Uh, Jordan Sanford says Seb Corda. Yeah, yeah. He's going to have to get past Alex Diemenauer. I think the bottom line there is Corda played. He's done. He's had time to recover. He's at Wimbledon earlier. Alex Diemenauer, I think he's still playing. I think he plays tomorrow. Yeah, so uh, Alex Demonauer, not going to be as fresh. I like Seb to get through uh, Demonauer because of that. Otherwise, I would have gave it to Demonauer. Uh, he beat Rubla, uh, Roberto Batista Agut pretty easy. Uh, great season will continue. Okay, and the Tiger Tignor says Jan Leonard Struff. Uh, the Struffmeister, he did beat Mr. Medvedev in Halle in the first round. Can he do it again? I do like Jan Leonard Struff on grass. I have for a while, going back to the beginning of this show. It's been about, uh, yeah, four years we've been doing this now. Loving it every second. I've always liked the Struff on the grass, but on the ATP Tour, you don't usually beat a top player two times in a row that fast, except for Guillermo Willy Cañas in 2007. It, it definitely happened then, like back-to-back weeks. Holy shnikes, that was crazy. But that's extremely rare. So will Struff beat Medvedev, Medvedev twice in like a two-week span? I don't think so. Uh, men's disappointments. The Fitz says Sitsipas hasn't played since losing Roland Garros. While a mental reset could be advantageous, he's got to play TFO and Popsicle. Uh, yeah, those guys could take him down. I have him getting through TFO. I think I have Steph going down to Pospisil. I really want to pick Steph. He's really good at the net. It's a very good uh, good thing to have at Wimbledon. 
Uh, it's a tough one with Steph. I don't know what to say. How will he react to his loss in his first slam final? There's a lot of stuff going on with Steph. Not to mention, in 2019, he was pretty bad on the grass. Uh, Heron Hatchinov is going to be a dif- disappointment, according to Kale Ham. Not sure what happened to the Russians' confidence. Extreme Western grip. We've talked about it on the show before. It's hideous. This forehand, he hits like this. <sighs> uh, how do you do that without breaking your shoulder? Uh, you know, I went to Cincinnati after that video, and we're, we're going this year, by the way. Crunch Time Coaching is back, baby, with Peter Freeman, coaching a uh, tennis teaching guru and genius. And he said, you know, we, we watched that match where Nick Kyrgios went crazy and had to pay like $120,000 in fines, where he lost to uh, Heron Khachanov. And I remember Pete saying, that's a beautiful forehand, Matt. It's like, yeah, well, when we're sitting here watching him crank forehands almost 100 miles an hour, yeah, it's pretty awesome. But aesthetically, compared to the other greatest players in the world, it's pretty ugly, Pete. I'm sorry, Pete. I disagree. Uh, he says Kachanov's going down to Mackie McDonald. Mackie McDonald's very similar to Nisha Corey. Nisha Corey's good on the grass. Mackie McDonald's good on the grass. Uh, Adrian Manorino, Federer's first-round opponent, he's good on the grass. What do those three guys have in common? Very tiny take back, especially Manorino. He just goes here. He's hitting it. They can take the ball really early. Taking the ball early helps you everywhere. It helps you the most on grass, especially with that low bounce. Uh, David Kane, he says, Danny Medvedev is going to be a big disappointment. Mm, I think he gets through Struffy Struff. Medvedev's doing well wherever the hell he is. Some some crappy tournament on grass, some ATP 250. Uh, I think he's in Mallorca. Actually, he looks pretty nice there. I'd like to go. Uh, Medvedev, I... We'll talk about it when we look at him in the draw a little bit. But I like him on grass. I think he's figuring it out. I don't think it's good for him to stand so far back. But the way he plays so similar to Djokovic, why would he not be good on grass eventually? He's got a big serve, a bigger serve than Djokovic. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, Carreño Busta, he's got a, a flat ball. It's good on grass. But who does he have? Does he have Sam Query up first? Yeah, he's not coming through there. Ed McGrogan doesn't like him. It's going to be a disappointment. Monfils is Jordan Sanford. Jordan Sanford. Talk about picking the easiest one. That's your big disappointment? The guy who hasn't won since COVID started? He's won twice? Yeah, thanks for nothing. Steven the Tiger, he says Roberto Batista Agut is going to be a disappointment. He's number eight seed. He's been to the semifinals, but a big server, Riley Opelka, awaits in the third round. I think I have RBA going past Riley Opelka because he's been uh, he's been disappointed. He shouldn't, though. He should be really good here. He should be like John Isner. We'll see. All right, men's champion, Matt Fitzgerald says Novak. He was in the position five years ago. He's consistently shown how to enter uncharted territory. Mark down piece number three of five for Novak's golden calendar slam puzzle. Eh, it's not such a bad take. Cole the Ham says Novak Djokovic. Not only is the serve light years better than anyone in the draw. I mean, really, like, that's the truth here. There's there's not a lot of players you look at and say, like, oh, he's great on grass. Other than, like, there's some young guys who are good on grass, but it's early in their careers. So, you know, there's question marks there. There's old guys who were good on grass, but it's really late in their careers. And then there's Roger and Novak. Uh, David Kane says Federer. Okay, I like him all of a sudden. Did I diss anything he said before? While Djokovic is the obvious choice, the number one endured a dip in form after winning in 2016 at the Roland Garros. He's thinking history repeats itself. Well, it usually does. Federer should be fresher and more focused. Okay. Ed McGrogan says, Joker, it's hard to imagine anyone seriously challenging the calendar slam contender until the semis. And by that point, there could be even more big name attrition. Okay. Jordan the Sandman says, Novak Djokovic, it's hard to pick anyone not named Nole. Uh, Steven the Tiger, Tignor, he says, Roger Federer. This is a great take. This is brilliant. He didn't show much in Halle, but his draw could help him shed the rust. Despite what happened in 2019, no one knows how to close at Wimbledon, like Federer. Will we keep these around? All right, we'll see. Maybe we'll come back to it. Maybe something will... Maybe I'll take it back. All right, put the draw on the screen. Let's get going. Let's start with Nole. How easy is the draw? Well, he's got Jack Draper. That's uh, kind of a tricky uh, start. Eh, not really. But, yeah, this guy's got some wins on grass. He likes it. Don Draper from Mad Men. Great show. So it's a must-see TV match. The big question mark for me, why I say Nole may be a little bit of danger here, is because the guy is playing in Mallorca, totally different weather and conditions, totally different grass court, uh, tomorrow in doubles. Now, I will say this. I'm watching the doubles. Djokovic looks great. He looks happy. He looks confident. He looks like he's having fun. How is that a bad thing going to Wimbledon? I don't know. I think the year he lost, 
early, one of the years, was when he played the Granola Bar Open, which now has a different sponsor. But Eastbourne, whatever it's called, will always be known as the Granola Bar Open because it used to be sponsored by a granola bar company here at Coffee Break Tennis. That's what we'll call it. Uh, he didn't do well that year. Now he's playing doubles in Mallorca. Uh, it worked out in Beagre Day before the French. That was that proved to be pretty smart, but this is doubles. Djokovic is standing closer to the middle. He's not out wide serving like most doubles players would do, which is smart because that'll kind of, not a lot, but hitting and uh, at Wimbledon, it's so important to hit that slice serve, right? You hit it, you come over the side and the top a little bit, get that thing going down, cutting low and away to the left as a righty in the deuce court, away from the forehand. Yes, it goes to the stronger shot of 90% of all tennis players in the world, I think it's about 90% but prefer the forehand. Not just pros, but everybody, every level of tennis. Uh, but if you hit it well, especially at Wimbledon, it's highly effective. So I can tell you from playing on doubles and singles leagues every year for years and years, when you serve out wide, you can get some sick angle with that slice serve out wide, that slider. But when you go back to the middle as a singles player, it feels pretty different. The slider from standing out wide as a doubles guy and then standing in the middle. So good there that Djokovic is serving... Uh, closer to his singles position. It looks almost exactly like a singles position from what I've seen. Maybe uh, maybe he stepped out wide a couple times to change it up, but I, I doubt it. I wouldn't do that. So that's something. But still, the guy, uh, his own coach. I don't. Did we read this in the last show? Even Nizovich, he was saying, oh, we need to get out of there. Djokovic can't play singles because he's got to wrap up earlier. I guess they thought that they would definitely lose because his partner, uh, the guy's never even won on the tour before in doubles. So I guess they thought Djokovic would, you know, get a couple matches in and lose to some, uh, you know, more deserving, uh, more practiced, accomplished doubles players. But that didn't happen. Djokovic is now in the final. He's still in Mallorca. Even Izovic wanted to be at Wimbledon Friday. Well, Friday's today. And, you know, we're behind here in the U.S. So we're, we're getting close to Saturday. Djokovic is still there, and he's got to play a final and do a trophy ceremony and all that. Djokovic will have Sunday. Defending champions play first at Wimbledon. That's Monday. Djokovic is going to arrive late tomorrow when everyone else has been there for days practicing at Wimbledon. Different conditions, different court. Everything's going to be different. Djokovic is going to get there Saturday night, practice on Sunday, play on Monday against this Draper guy. So that's why I put a star on it, and I wonder a little bit. But, of course, Djokovic is going to come through there. Second round is probably going to be Kevin Anderson. I don't know this Marcelo Tomas Barrios Vera guy from Chile. Kevin Anderson, I think he comes through because I don't know that guy, although the guy did have to qualify. Kevin Anderson in the second round, this is a guy who was in the finals that got destroyed by Djokovic in 2018. It's not an easy second round, but no one has any faith in Kevin Anderson ever since his injury troubles. He hasn't been the same. He hasn't been 2018 finalist, 2017 U.S. Open finalist Kevin Anderson for a while. Uh, I got Kudla coming through, even though Davidovich, David Ovich, or David Ovich, as Paul Anaconda says, he could be good here, but I don't know. You know, like a lot of these young guys, I don't expect much from them on grass because even though grass is slow, speed-wise, it's closer to all the other courts now. That's true. But it's very low. That's the one thing you got to know about grass. The ball stays lower than anywhere else. The ball just dies, especially that's a normal ball, right? That's the ball where they roll it up and hit some top spin on it that usually jumps up everywhere around the world. That ball stays lower. But that's why Federer, that slice is so dangerous. If you freaking knife the ball on grass, it stays very low, especially early. So that's that's what makes everything so different. That's why it's very important to look at guys' records on grass, which I did, you know, going through here. Most of these I already kind of know who's good and who's not on grass. And then a lot of people are just question marks. You'll see a lot of question marks in this draw. All right, let's start going through a little faster. I'll try not to stop and talk too much. So I got Kudla coming through because this is a guy who has success on grass. I think his I think his best winning percentage by surface is on grass. Uh, he'll probably come through to Nole in the third. Well, Nole should crush him, but that's a guy who will be more comfortable there. You know, and also with the grass being more lush, the ball will not bounce as high. It'll be slower, but it'll stay lower and get through, you know, lower. I don't want to say faster because it's a little bit slower with the lush, full grass, right? The grass gets worn away, then it plays a little more like a hard court. It's still grass, of course. So early on, Kevin Anderson for Djokovic second round. That might be tricky to return the big serve. You, know, you might want to back up a little like Medvedev, although it's just not a good idea on grass. That's why, ultimately, I'm not sure on Medvedev here. Backing up so much on the first serve. I saw him mixing it up today. He stepped in and cranked one for a winner. 
Uh, I hope he does more of that as he gets through. But, of course, containing a big serve and backing up, it's such a great strategy the way Djokovic and uh, Medvedev work. At mainly Medvedev is the one who backs up so far. But it's a nice thing to be able to use. If Medvedev is going to do that all the time, he could run into somebody who's going to be smart enough to come to net or is going to be able to hit the ball big enough. The return that uh, Medvedev hits so far back, there's no time to really recover. And it, it's not that it's like so fast, it's, just, it's so low. You get there with the ball so low, there's just nothing you can do with it when you're that far away returning from the wall. You know, There's a reason why Dominic Team has never done well at Wimbledon. All right, so uh, Nole comes through Kudla, of course. Uh, Christian Green, I don't have faith in him going very far. Uh, this Yin Sun Lu guy from Chinese Taipei, he's a guy I've seen in the past do well on the grass. So I got him coming through to the third round. Pedro Martinez, he's more like um, Pablo Carrena Busta, uh, a more flatter stroke, if I'm thinking of the right Martinez, but I'm pretty sure that's the guy from Espana. Uh, Christopher O'Connell, I think that's a guy who's a little bit better on grass, if I remember correctly. But I got Martinez coming through. Uh, I have him going to the fourth round. It's really tough to pick there. It doesn't really matter. I think Djokovic is going to kill all those guys. It's a pretty easy section for the people saying it's an easy draw. I mean, yeah, that is easier than most sections, it seems like. Uh, he is the number one seed, though. He kind of deserves it. Uh, Schwarty D, I have him coming over Benoit Pair. In theory, Benoit Pair should be able to do better here and have an advantage on grass against Schwarty D. But who trusts Benoit Pair right now with anything? Uh, I got Diego coming through there. Uh... Chekanato, I got him losing to Brody. Uh, Yannick Hoffman, I think he's uh, had some good results on grass in the past. Uh, Yuri Vesely has too, but I don't trust that guy at all for a long time. So I'll take Hoffman. It was tough for me to pick this one. Yannick Sinner, I love him so much. It's early for him on grass. I think he's going to be really good on grass one day. But especially, you know, you got to hit your spots on grass more than ever. That's what we thought we, we discovered was the problem with Yannick Sinner. I mean, a lot of people have talked about the serve, but to me, it's not about the serve. You know, people have said he needs to hit a bigger serve. He hits it pretty big. He needs to hit spots better. When you miss your spot and you hit it big at Wimbledon, someone, especially like someone like a Manorino, that's why they do well on grass. Tiny take back, take the ball early where it's a missed spot and they can get it in the wheelhouse and you can just, good luck getting that thing back. That ball's, even if, you know, if it's away from you, good luck chasing it out. It's going to be so low. You're going to have to hit a ball below your ankles when you get there. Good luck. Uh, even though Mr. Fuchovic, uh, he, he's not great record on grass at all. I get it. He's gone through the growing pains, right? He's had his losses on grass. He's had some some tough ones, too. I'll take him over Yannick Center. I really didn't want to pick that. I want Center to do well here. I'm going to take Fuchovic. Uh, Fuchovic and Schwarty D. I'll take Schwarty D. It's a tough call there. Uh, you know, a lot of these guys, like, you just don't have enough information, especially a lot of these a lot of these players didn't even play a tune-up for grass. Like, we haven't even seen these guys on grass since 2019. Some of these guys in the draw have never played on grass. Uh, Fabio Fonini, he's done a lot of winning on grass. I'll take him over Ramos Vinolas. Uh, I'll take Laszlo Jera over Pablo Cuevas. That's kind of a tough pick, too, but I'll, I'll take Laszlo Jera. I think he just, I think Cuevas hasn't played on grass. I think Jera did get a win on grass. Getting ready to come here, maybe. Uh, Fonini, I'll take, though, over that because he's actually got some experience. Uh, Barancas, I think, is going to be... I'm going to take him over Lloyd Harris, even though Lloyd Harris has got a great serve. Uh, we'll take Rublev. We'll take Rublev over Barancas. Uh, I like Barancas's game for grass. He's a compact hitter, too. Uh, he's a short guy, low to the ground, grass, low bounce. Being short, not so bad. That's why maybe Shorty D could figure it out. It's a little easier to get down for those low balls. But, you know, you could say also, hey, Matt, what about the big tall guys with the big serves? Well, yeah, serve dominates above all here at Wimbledon. Uh, okay, so we'll take Rublev going through Shorty D. We'll take Nole over Rublev. Uh, I, I don't think he's going to be a problem. It is pretty easy, okay? <laughs> Djokovic comes through the semifinals. Uh, Steph Tsitsipas over TFO. It's a must-see TV match. Big question marks. How is Steph going to look after uh, losing his first final to major? You know, will, will that fortify him will he feel strength and resolve will he be encouraged will he uh dare to dream or will he go down to francis tfo well we don't we don't love tfo here but you know tfo could be dangerous maybe pospisil more dangerous i think he's got a shot to take out steph uh igor gerasimov i got him beating jay clark mackie mcdonald takes out karen kachanov i agree with uh whoever was saying from tennis.com there's nothing there i'm pointing at I got Mackie McDonald coming through this mystery match because I don't know if it's going to be the Popsicle or Steph. 
think Mackie McDonald, the guy came back from two sets down in the qualifiers, the final round of qualifiers. Uh, Nisha Corey's been good here. Mackie should be able to do some of the same stuff you see from Anisha Corey. It's a very similar skill set. Guys fighting hard. You know, qualifiers can be really good, but this is a guy who uniquely should be better than a lot of players on grass. And he's fought through the qualifiers, so he's got to be feeling pretty good. I give him a shot to go to the fourth round, but you'll see there's a question mark there because it's kind of tough to pick this area, especially with all the question marks on Steph Sitsipas. Uh, Dirty Dan, I have him coming through Feli Lopez, although that's tough. There's a star in that, should be a good match, question mark. Uh, I think this is Dirty Dan's time, though. I mean, the guy found ways to win on clay this year, and this is a place that's going to help him out more than the clay. Uh, Duzi Lajevic, I think that was the first round for Federer where it was a little dangerous in 2017, and then Federer, of course, he never dropped a set, but there was a tie break with Duzi Lajevic. Uh, I took Jill Simone, though. He's uh, just way more experience with grass, way more winning, but guy hasn't looked good. It's another tough pick. I'll take Jill Simone. Dirty Dan wins against either one of them. Doesn't matter. Uh, a couple of qualifiers. I'll take the French guy. Surely a French guy is going to do better at Wimbledon than a Chinese guy, but I, I don't really know enough about both those players to tell you. A couple of qualities. We'll go with uh, Ho Ang. Uh, Korda. I'll take him over Demon Hour. We talked about that a little bit earlier. Uh, Korda is just going to be a little fresher, I think. Plus, he looked pretty good on the grass. I'll take Cole Schreiber over Shapovalov. A little bit of a tough pick, but not too tough. Uh, I just think it's, you know, these guys, they always have growing pains on the grass. Uh, expect Dennis Shapovalov to slip and fall and Cole Schreiber to be very comfortable. But Shapo, in theory, a good lefty serve is really nice on the grass at Wimbledon. Just ask Johnny McEnroe. So, in theory, Shapovalov, Shapovalov, however you want to say it, he should, uh, El Shapo, how we prefer it here, he should be able to win that match, but I'm not going to put any faith in these young guys in their early uh, grass escapades, their grass capades. Uh, Pierre Ugh Herbert comes through Andahar for sure. Uh, beats Cole Schreiber, I think. I like Pierre Ugh Herbert, one of the true, rare serve and volley players. I like him to do well here, like that one guy from Tennis.com, and go to the fourth round. I have him losing the Roberto Batista Agut, but, you know, you could make a case for him to be able to win that. Roberto Batista Agut, of course, he's got a ball that stays low everywhere. Well, it's going to stay really low at Wimbledon. That's not fun to deal with. He's got to go through Riley Opelka. Uh, tough one to call, because what is Riley Opelka going to do here? Is he going to be amazing, or is he going to lose first round? Like, nothing will surprise you with that guy. Uh, Oscar the Otter and uh, Rinder, Rinder Kanesh, another tricky one, a couple of qualifiers. These are two guys that I would actually like on grass, but I'll go with Oscar the Otter. I think he's got a little more experience playing on grass. Uh, I think challenger level mainly, but it looks like I think he has a winning record at the challenger level on grass. Uh, Andy Murray gets Basil Ashvili. Seems a little tough, but I'll put faith in Andy Murray. He's going to come through. Uh, Riley Opelka and Kepfer, I'll take Opelka. Even though I, you know, I don't have a ton of faith in the guy, but with that serve, you gotta figure out a way to win at Wimbledon, dude. Just look at Sam Query and John Isner. They made most of their money there. I'll take Kwan over Masur. Uh, I'll take Ketsmanovic over uh, Bagnus. And I'll take RBA over John the Milkman Millman. All right, this is where it gets fun. Let's start flying with this thing. Uh, Opelka in RBA. I'll take RBA for the experience. Uh, I'll take Air Bear over Andy Murray. Sorry. I got Dirty Dan going really far. RBA in the semis. Nole takes out RBA in the semis. He could do it again. Why not? Uh, okay, bottom half of the draw. A little more mystery here. Berrettini. Uh, remember, Guido Pella, he surprised us at Wimbledon one time. He can play on the grass, but Berrettini is outstanding. He's probably the most impressive of all the young guns on grass in the last few years. Uh, he comes through. Got Barrera, Barrett. Doesn't matter who wins there. Uh, I'll take the qualifier over the lucky loser any day. Barrera uh, will lose to Berrettini, though. Uh, Mute and Bedene. A little tricky of a pick. I'll take Mute. Uh, John Isner, I'm going to take him all the way to the semifinals. Just go ahead and tell you that now. I like John Isner. I, I, most importantly, I like John Isner the way he played Steph Sitsipas at the French Open with uh, the night match. I think it was raining. Yeah, it was raining. He wanted him to close the roof. They didn't close the roof. He still put up a really good fight. Made you feel like he could win that match. 
this is going to be a place that's much better for him. He's getting towards the end of his career. I think he's in a similar place as Roger Federer. He's going to feel good going to Wimbledon like we heard from Woodbridge. He's going to let it all hang out. He's going to go big. I think he's going to be extremely dangerous here at Wimbledon. Uh, no five-set, 25-hour, whatever the heck it was, long-hour matches here. Uh, Karatsev, really a big mystery on grass. We don't know much about him. I'll take Jeremy Shardy over Karatsev here. Uh, big serve, and he's won on grass. Karatsev hasn't. I don't even think Karatsev played any uh, challenger-level grass tournaments. I didn't see much there. Uh, Nisha Corey over Popper, and you'd think Popper would be very dangerous, but he doesn't. It's not much experience winning on grass, like none. So we'll take Nisha Corey there. Uh, I'll take Shardy over Avashka. We'll take Casper Rudeboy. Jordan Thompson, you could make a case that maybe he will like grass more so than Casper Rude. Uh, Jordan Thompson, every time I see him, the guy's going nuts. He's in a bad place mentally right now, so I'll take Casper Rude. But that's a little tricky one to pick, too. Um, we'll take Nisha Corey over that. We'll take Nisha Corey over Shardy. We'll take Isner over Mute. And we'll take Isner over Berrettini. I like Berrettini here. But I think Isner might be able to do a little more than Berrettini. That big forehand is awesome. But I think Berrettini can take the racket. I mean, I think Isner can take the racket out of Berrettini's hands. I think Isner's got a better backhand now. He's had to work on it. Took him a long time. Berrettini, expect him to have a similar trajectory. Uh, the slice. I guess Berrettini's a better slice. But Isner's a better volleyer. He's better at net. He's better at recognizing opportunities to go to net. I think advantage Isner here. I'm taking John Isner. Uh, I don't know if that's a popular take, but that's what I'm going to go with here. Uh, let's move down. I got Isner over Nishikori, quarterfinals. What happens below that for Isner to get into the semis? The quarter below. We got Felix Oje taking out Diego Montero. I got Sanga over Emer. I'd love to say Sanga. You know, Felix and Sanga, two really likable guys on the tour. I'd like to say Sanga beats Felix, but I just don't think it's going to happen. I think Sanga will be really happy to win a match at Wimbledon again. I really hope for the best with the guy. Would love to see him keep playing. He's talked about his career like it's going to end very soon, but I think he's going to keep trying. He doesn't want it to end, but if he keeps losing everywhere, it might end fairly soon. Uh, Juan Ignacio Londero, John Luca Major. I don't think Major's ever played on grass. He didn't play on, he's like playing on clay like a couple days ago. Uh, Londero, maybe the same case. Tough one to pick. I'll go with Londero. Uh, Kyrgios and Ugo Umber. Must see TV. Probably the most exciting first round matchup here. I mean, it's just a thrill to see Kyrgios. But then for him to go up against one of the hottest young players on grass, uh, Ugo Umber has a lot of stuff going for him. Compact swings, not erratic. I compared him to Chapo a while ago because so they're both lefties. Not so erratic like Chapo. Smarter with the shot selection. Um, lefty slider serve. Ask Johnny Mack. Like I said before, very useful at Wimbledon. I like Ugo Umber. He's got the confidence on grass. He just has a, a gastrointestinal food poisoning, stomach problem, something like that. He had to pull out of uh, wherever he just was, Mallorca, something like that. Granola bar open. Don't know. Uh, I got him winning against Nick Kyrgios, but... You know, we haven't seen Kyrgios in so long. It's a really tough match to pick. Would you be shocked if Kyrgios wins? Of course not. We'll go with Umber. Is Umber over his stomach ache? I don't know. I hope he is. Jesus, I hope he can figure out a way past his stomach ache. Uh, Fritz, Taylor Fritz, the guy just had a torn meniscus surgery. Uh, I'll take Nakashima. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let me see. Who do I got? Felix beating Sanga. Let's finish this section. Or no, no, we'll, we'll finish just below it. Uh, Stevie Johnson, another tough one. Dennis Novak is a guy who actually likes playing on grass. Not that he's had a ton of wins on grass. Stevie Johnson's won more on grass. Uh, I'll take Stevie Johnson. I, another person who I liked, he's getting near the end of his career maybe. I like the effort he put in at the French Open. I, I thought he put up a good fight, even though in that last match, I think he lost straight sets. I still felt like it was a good fight. I think grass is going to be better to him than the clay. I'll take him over Dennis Novak. But another tough one because uh, both of those guys actually kind of like the grass. They would like their chances here unless they get another guy who likes being on a grass court. So a uh, tough draw for them, at least they're not playing Novak Djokovic. Be happy with that, boys. Uh, Tennis Sandgren and Norbert Gombush. Uh, Gombush, I think he actually picked up a couple wins on grass last week or a win. He's got one. Tennis Sandgren hasn't played at all. Tennis Sandgren overall, better record on grass. I like the Sandman. I think the guy's a warrior. I'll take him. He's going to lose to Sasha Zverev, so it don't matter. Sasha Zverev is going to take out Steve Johnson, who I have going to the third round. Just think he's at a place in the career where 
You know, everything fits in place. You're grateful for the career. You know the time is limited. I think he's going to put up a good fight, but he will not be able to beat Sasha Zverev here, no matter how many double faults Sasha hits. Uh, I got Zverev losing to Umber or Kyrgios. I think it's going to be one of those guys in the fourth round. I think Sasha goes down there. But he could he could easily make the quarterfinal. If he does, that complicates things because I, I think John Isner would take out a Ugo Umber in a quarterfinal, right? It's such a big occasion. I, think I like Ugo Umber, but then when he gets there and he faces a guy who's been there before, I don't like him as much. Sasha Zverev, even though he hasn't, um, he hasn't been great on grass, but, well, I take that back. Sasha Zverev, you know, he, he's shown that he couldn't be very good on grass, but the problem with Sasha is he loves to drift backwards on every surface, and that's just really dumb on grass because the bounce is so low. Part of the reason why I have my troubles with uh, Medvedev. But Zverev, you know, he's a big-time player. He's got, a, a, you know, a good claim to beat John Isner here. He, he, you know, he has some business doing that. You know, you'd say, you have no business, Ugo and Bear, dealing with someone like John Isner in the quarterfinals at Wimbledon, who, you know, you have no business being there and, and taking on someone as accomplished as John Isner. Zverev, I think, actually does. So that could change things. That could be a Zverev semifinal for, you see it, the giant RF. I didn't even look at his draw. I just punched in RF all the way to the final where the big question for me is, I think he could beat any of these bozos here at Wimbledon. You know, play this clip. Uh talk over it for a little bit, because uh, some people like the song. I'm not thrilled with the song, but the lyrics do fit very well. I will acknowledge that. Uh, Federer, you know, when you can hit a ball that sweet, when you can slice that sweet, you're, you're going to find it. And if you, if you find it, if you don't find it, that's a big problem. But when you find it at Wimbledon, I mean, that, Federer, come on. Roger Federer at Wimbledon, when you can hit the ball like that on the grass and you get that perfect arsenal for the grass... I just, I don't see how Roger doesn't find some confidence and beat all these guys. He's moving well. He looks healthy. It's all a mental thing. And I think like uh, Woodbridge was saying, when he walks through the gates of Wimbledon, things will change. Roger will feel very at home here, especially with the half capacity crowd. Halla, he feels really good there, but it's a weird thing with no crowd. He's going to have it at Wimbledon. He's going to be on center court like every match. Let's hope they don't stick him on a different court like 2018. What a travesty. All right, so RF we get to. Adrian Manorino, it will be tricky. Manorino will make you hit a lot of balls. If Roger's looking for the confidence, look for the crowd to pick him up, of course. But if he's looking for the confidence, he's not feeling it, Manorino will make him hit a lot of balls. But ultimately, Manorino's too easy to break. To me, the big thing was, yeah, Manorino, he's great returning when you miss the spots. Manorino might be able to break Roger if Roger's still feeling like he doesn't have his confidence or whatever. But it's going to be too easy for him to break back against Manorino. Uh, there was a story, by the way, saying that Andy Murray and Roger were playing a practice set. And you may be surprised, the head, you know, these clickbait things. You may be surprised by the result. The result was Andy Murray was up 6-5 and they were going to go to a tiebreaker. And then they decided to call it. They'd had enough, I guess. They stopped practicing. Uh, if we see Federer in a tiebreak with Manorino, that could happen in the first set. If he's really nervous and uncomfortable, maybe he loses that tiebreak. Then we have some big danger. I could see that in the first round. But I don't see him losing. Ultimately, he beats Manorino, and I like him in straight sets. Gasquet and Yuichi Sugita. Sugita's good on grass. Gasquet is good on grass, too. Um, we'll take Gasquet. We'll take Federer over Gasquet. Flip Krajinovic. I liked Gasquet's effort against Rafa. Losing, uh, was it his birthday? I think it was his birthday or something. Uh, he lost to Rafa. It was Rafa's birthday. Whatever. Somebody's birthday. Anyways, uh, there was like a little, you know, French players could come in. There was no crowd for that match at the French. It was a night match with the roof closed, I think. Or, I don't remember. It doesn't matter. I think it was raining. Anyways, Gasquet, I liked his effort he put in. Another one of these guys, they know they're at the end. You have a, a certain piece, you know. It's almost like when you're playing with house money, you don't care so much. You know, he's, he's nothing to be ashamed of. Gasquet, he's had a great career. Yeah, a lot of people thought he would have done better because he was the, the child prodigy, the wunderkind. But... I like how he let it all hang out against Rafa and gave him a tough fight, especially when it started off with him just getting destroyed. I think he could give Roger a tough fight, but I still I don't see him beating Federer right now. Although, it's early and Federer hasn't looked good. So, a little danger of Manorino and Gasquet up first, for sure. Uh, Krajinovic, I'll take him over Alex Bolt, the Bolt of Lightning. Uh, Cam Norrie's been good on the grass. We'll take him over Lucas Puy. 
Mm, we'll take Nori over Flip Krajinovic. Again, like, it's kind of tricky for Federer. Like, none of these matches are super easy. These are all guys who uh, who like grass, or in Cam Nori's case, he's been doing well on grass recently. He's been doing well everywhere recently. It's tricky. Ultimately, I think the serve, though, Federer, if he can get his together and hit his spots, unlike what he did in Halle against uh, Felix Alde Auge, I don't think Nori is uh, able to easily break him, and Nori will be breakable. Uh, Lorenzo Sonego, the guy he's playing tomorrow, it's kind of tricky to come, you know, leave the granola bar open and then go to Wimbledon right away with a day in between. Uh, I guess he'll play on Tuesday, however, so at least he'll have that. He won't have the problem Djokovic has with just playing right away. Uh, we'll, we'll give Sonego the win over, uh, Pedro Souza. Uh, Coria or Galan, question mark, don't know. Sonego beats him, though. Uh, Ducky, I'll take him losing to Radu Albato, Mr. Albato. Uh, Sam Query over Corena Busta. Sam Query over Albot. Sam Query over Sonego. Roger Federer takes out uh, Query and Isner on his way to the final. That's my prediction. Uh, I like Musetti over her catch. Uh, I like Marcus Jerome over Root Savori. I don't know enough about email here. And Marcus Jerome did have a, a good win on grass. Uh, we'll take Jerome losing to Musetti. We got the Kushmeister losing the Bublik. How often do you see two guys from Kazakhstan in the first round of a major? That's probably never happened before. But in the all Kazakh Borat final, I mean, uh, first round, uh, we'll take Bublik because he's got such a sweet serve. And who knows, maybe he'll hit 100 under, uh, underarm serves again. Uh, Verdasco over Dimitrov. Don't trust Dimitrov. Uh, Marin Cilic over Salvatore Caruso. Uh, Bonzi over Trungaletti. Tommy Paul's never won on grass. We'll take Alcaraz. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Don't know anything about Alcaraz on the grass. Uh, he's got a good drop shot. That could come in handy. So, uh, Jan Leonard Struff Struff. Is he going to beat Medvedev again? I don't think so. I think Medvedev is starting to figure it out. Let's run through it, and I'll talk more about Medvedev. Medvedev over Alcaraz. Chilich over Bonsai. Medvedev over... Ch no. Medvedev loses to Chilich. Ultimately, I think Medvedev returning from the wall against Marin Chilich... Is a, is a bad mix. Medvedev could win, of course. I'd like for him to win. I think he could be really good on grass. Uh, I don't know if this is the year where it happens. So we take Chilich there. Muzetti beats uh, Garon, but Bublik takes out Muzetti. Just the serve is too sweet. Chilich beats Bublik. Federer beats Chilich. Federer beats Isner. We get 2019 rematch. Djokovic, Federer in the final. Hit the music. I got to get out of here. Do comment below. Do you agree with this? I think Federer finds it, even though the draw, the, the draw, tough and draw, druff. The Jan Leonard Struff, druff, tough, draw. It's tricky. It's tricky for Roger Federer, for sure. But I still think all these guys, they're bozos compared to Roger Federer on the grass, even if they are a little bit comfortable with the grass. And then the question for me is, can he beat Djokovic? Because if he finds anything close to what he's capable of, I think he's able to get there. Yeah, John is Isner, Sam Query, Marin Cilic, all those guys could be pretty scary. Uh, I mean, are we really, like, so worried about Cam Nori because he got a couple wins on grass recently to beat Roger Federer? For me, Medvedev, uh, the movement, he's such a great mover. He's moving well on grass, but I don't think he's given himself enough time to recover and get the balls when he returns from the wall. He's hit some great returns from the wall. Uh, Marin Cilic, <clears throat> I think that will be a little bit of a problem for the way Medvedev returns. And he could have been dangerous for Roger Federer, but ultimately, I, I just, I love Medvedev. I just think it's very difficult, especially if Chilch is smart enough to know, like, to come to net sometimes with that. Chilch can hit it big and flat, you know, if Chilch hits such a flat ball. So if Medvedev is returning that serve from the wall, and then Chilch puts a good return in the corner, I think Chilch will have no problem. Do comment below your thoughts on the draw. Like I said, it's a tricky one to pick. I'm sure you will agree with me. I'm very curious to hear people's thoughts, mainly on can Roger actually get there and can he beat Djokovic or is it going to be history repeating itself? A 39-year-old man goes to the final and gets absolutely destroyed. Is that what we have on the cards this year at Wimbledon? See you!